Next problem up. Here we go. Again, this is practice test style. We got this, everybody. Looking at our final 10 seconds here, everybody. Feel free to start plugging those answers in. What do you have? And time is up, everybody. That is time. Go ahead, put those answers in. Put a question mark next to your answer if it is a guess, as always. I got you. All right, let's give it a shot here. Let's give it a shot. So, everybody, first things first, we gotta read that question, as always. Read the question first. We don't wanna get confused by anything that might be doable, right? So, here we go. It says here, what fraction of the original cupcakes remained expressed in simplest terms so i will go ahead and ask you all straight up did anybody overlook this did anybody ignore that and then get confused right at the end <laughs> right it can definitely throw you off the question can definitely throw you off if you ignore these little details so it says it clearly here, expressed in simplest terms. Everybody, which fractions, which answers here are not expressed in simplest terms? Which ones for sure are not expressed in, in simplest terms? Yeah, A and B. A and B are not in simplest terms. Like these are both even numbers. You can simplify that. 30 and 48, both even numbers as well. You can simplify that too. You can immediately cross out A and B because those are not in simplest terms immediately. So anybody who picked A or B, you might have overlooked that right here. And that's okay. Again, mistakes are going to happen. But I want to point out that reading instructions, reading the question, very important. Mari, yeah, I, I am very adamant about reading the question first. But notice how many folks still got confused. And it's because we're not used to that, right? We're not used to trying to find what the goal is first. Sometimes a lot of us are just so used to letting the whirlwind hit you and hoping for the best. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't have to feel that way. It can feel a lot better in terms of feeling like you're in control, feeling like you can manage your test anxiety, and feeling like you can manage it well enough to make good decisions. That's what we're trying to train here. That's what we're trying to learn. And you can do it. Absolutely. So here we go, my party people. We want to know again what fraction of the original cupcakes remained. Okay, that's another big one, remained. So what fraction of them remained? So here's what we're gonna do. The remaining cupcakes, and this is where a lot of folks are going to probably uh, buy a cardboard cutout of me and get ready to punch the face in. I know, I know, but this is probably the part where that's gonna happen. What we see here is, we are looking for the original, what fraction of the original cupcakes remained? Again, the remaining cupcakes. So the way that we're gonna write that fraction is going to be the remaining cupcakes divided by the total. Everybody, what was the total? That's the easier part. How many cupcakes were made for the party? Yeah, 48 were made for the party. So that, that's the easy part. That is the easy part for sure. 48, cool. Now, Eddie Risa, again, this is why I don't give out any of my personal details because this is the kind of problem that'll make some folks mad. So everybody, uh, what number belongs up here? 30, right? 30, yeah, that's the number that belongs in there. A lot of us are saying yes. These are the same folks that are gonna want my head in a moment. So again, 30 cupcakes were eaten. That's how many cupcakes were eaten. Let's zoom on in on that. Let me make sure that you know, my eyes aren't, aren't rough here. 30 cupcakes were eaten. My party people, does that mean that there are 30 left? No, that does not mean that there were 30 left. Not by any means. What this means is 30 were eaten. If we had 48 cupcakes at the beginning and then we ate 30, how many are left? 18, exactly. So it's not 30 that belongs in here. It's gonna be 18 because 48 
minus 30, that's going to be 18 remaining. And so we will have 18 out of 48. So everybody, did I trick you or did you not pay enough attention? Let's be real. Let's be real. I'm going to run away after I ask this question because I don't want to get hit in the face. But y'all tell me, was it me tricking you or was it perhaps that you just didn't pay attention? It's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> I love y'all. So I know, I, I know I'm kidding. I've, I've been a teacher for 10 years. I know what the answer is to the question. I'm keeping y'all engaged. You're good. Y'all have nothing to worry about. I'm good. You're good. So let's go ahead then. Once we're here with the 18 remaining out of the 48 original, what's the one last thing that we need to do, everybody? What's the one last thing we need to do? Yeah, just got to simplify here. At the end, we just got to simplify to get our answer in simplest form or in simplest terms. And we're good. That's all we got to do at this point. So help me out, everybody. What is the, the number that the biggest number that can be divided out of both 18 and 48? Six? Yeah, six is the biggest number that can be divided both out of 18 and 48. And this is how it'll look. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Divide both the top and the bottom by six. 18 divided by six is three. 48 divided by six is eight. So there is our correct answer. D, three out of eight. And again, notice the math itself wasn't impossible. What was truly important was paying attention to how to set this up. It's really about paying attention to how to set it up. So this is the main point. Um, you know, we're almost out of time here. So this is the main point that I really want to drive home, especially if this was your first class with me. I want you to remember this. Every word problem, it's two phases. Every word problem will be completed in two phases. Step one, phase one, is all about translating the English into math. That's step one, translating the English into math. Step two is actually doing the math, all of this here. So for those of you who are here for the first time today, again, thank you for showing up. I welcome you in and I hope you come to more classes. But does that main point make sense? There are two phases to word problems, the setup and then the actual computation. Do you see the importance of understanding how to do each part properly? Yeah, that's the biggest key there, my part of people. And I'm glad that you came to this class. Um, you know, tomorrow we're gonna continue to work on the remaining problems from the practice test. But for those of you who are wondering in the program, this is arithmetic reasoning unit number one. This is your generalized word problems where it's really just going to be working with decimals, fractions, order of operations and word problems. Um, that's where you'll find this here. So on a scale of one to 10, with one being you learned nothing, this absolutely bombed, to 10 being, wait, hey, I see the avenues where I can succeed. I see what I'm doing wrong in some of these cases. How are you feeling today went? Right on. And like, I'm glad that y'all came to the study session today because again, tomorrow we're gonna follow up on this. For those of you in the program, we're gonna be going through the remaining questions. Today we had the chance to go over one, two, three, four, five, six. So tomorrow we are gonna be hitting it hard to answer the remaining 10 questions on that practice test. So with that said, my party people, let me go ahead and pause this recording here to continue it in tomorrow.